All right, everybody, if you can make your way up to the chairs, we will get started. Doesn't it feel great to be back in person? I've missed these, missed seeing everybody in person, and if everyone will make their way to the front, find a chair. Welcome to Franklin Tomorrow's Breakfast with the Mayors, our mayoral summit. This is a, a crowd favorite, and we are excited to have all of Williamson County's mayors here with us today. You'll notice that I am not Mindy Tate. And Mindy Tate is under the weather this morning, uh, or has been for the last couple of days. And so our thoughts and prayers are with Mindy as she recovers. I'm Patrick Baggett, board president of Franklin Tomorrow, and I will attempt to fill in for, for Mindy uh, this morning. We're going to welcome Franklin Tomorrow board member, in the absence of Jeff Simmons, a pastor at uh, Rolling Hills. Michael Armentrout is a uh, uh, Franklin Tomorrow board member. He's also executive director of Franklin Fellows, and he will offer a prayer this morning. Yes. Good morning, good morning. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for this group of men and women. What an impressive gathering of people. Um, Lord, I pray that we would be men and women who listen and who also lead the city. Lord, thank you for the wonderful leaders that you've given us here in Franklin. Lord, we pray for the mayors. Give them, uh, protect them, Lord. Um, protect them from evil, sin, and harm. Uh, thank you for Franklin. Thank you for giving us a wonderful place to work, to serve, to raise our children. Uh, and we ask for continued guidance uh, and discernment as we go forward um, out of this COVID pandemic. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you, Michael. Uh, again, thanks everyone for coming out. It feels great to uh, be back in person and to see the kind of attendance we have today. Just reaffirms the importance of Franklin Tomorrow's mission and specifically the missions of, of, uh, of Breakfast with the Mayors. Uh, this is uh, it's such a joy to see everybody and I hope everyone else uh, is feeling like I'm feeling this morning with uh, being able to to see friends uh, and, and community members. I want to thank our partners. We can't do what we do at Franklin tomorrow, offer these fantastic free events, Frank Talks, Breakfast with the Mayors, uh, as well as other events for free of charge without our partners. Specifically for Breakfast, Breakfast with the Mayors, uh, Pinnacle Financial Partners. I saw Steve King, he, oh, there he is, over here. Thank you, Pinnacle. Thank you for all you've done for Breakfast with the Mayors and Franklin Tomorrow over the years. We'd like to also thank Williamson Medical Center. I saw Nicole and Lee, they're here from Williamson Medical Center. They're a sustaining partner, uh, and we are so thankful for that uh, facility in our community uh, and the quality care they provide. And thank you all for supporting Franklin Tomorrow and Breakfast with the Mayors. Also saw Al at Gresham Smith and, and, and team here. They've got, there we are, we've got the booth over here. Uh, thank you for being here and for what you do for the community, not just Franklin Tomorrow, but other organizations as well. Uh, Williamson County Association of Realtors, Hazen and Sawyer, Patterson, Hardy, and Ballantyne Public Accountants, and our July sponsors, Middle Tennessee Electric. So thank you. I've seen Middle Tennessee Electric representatives here as well. Uh, we appreciate uh, what you do. And then finally, Andrew's tr uh, Transportation Group. You all uh, in Brentwood there with your brand new uh, garage and for, for, so that people can come and shop for cars in style. Uh, thank you, Andrews, for, for your support of Franklin Tomorrow. Also, Puckett's Grocery. Who enjoyed their biscuits this morning? Thank you, Puckett's. We had a uh, community coffee, normally does our coffee, but we had a little snafu and they could not be here. So thank you to the Franklin Tomorrow board members who worked very hard over the last 36 hours to figure out how to get coffee in your cups. So if you enjoyed your coffee, thank a Franklin Tomorrow board member. You'd be surprised at just how difficult it is to get coffee for this many people. It is uh, at short notice, but thank you board members uh, I want to welcome now uh, my, one of my favorite events in the fall, 
in September's Pilgrimage Music Festival. So I want to welcome Brant Wood up with a special, uh, some, some information and maybe a special giveaway. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Franklin Amaro. Uh, I'm Brant Wood, one of the producers and founders of Pilgrimage. I had the pleasure of being up here a few years ago um, to, to just share um, from my team an incredible gratitude we have for the support, the advocacy, and the patronage to come to Pilgrimage. It's, um, it's a labor of love for me and my team, but it's, um, our, our mission was to make it a part of the community and the cultural fabric, to do it right, to do what we said we were going to do, and it's year seven. Um, we've had some great years. We've had some challenging years, but I think um, they say storms make good sailors, and uh, we're, we're sailing well. Um, we're heading toward a sellout. Um, we are here today, actually. My whole t operations team is here to meet with your Franklin's Finest to do tabletop exercises. So we run through all the public safety contingencies and scenarios just to make sure that we are just on our game, doubling down on public safety. Um, if you haven't been to Pilgrimage, please come. Um, it's sort of a all walks of life, all folks, all ages. There's kids to get in free. Um, there's a Sunday service. And I'm not saying you can miss church, but there is a, um, there's a pastor. We have a choir. We have a real proper hour and a half service Sunday morning at what we call our AMT tent. Um, and I could go on, just you can go online and see who's playing. But I wanted to point out a few things. Um, I got here yesterday, I got here early. I met Maureen, your new visit Franklin director. She's amazing. What a great um, amount of experience she brings and the team that's already there. They are a big part of promoting your city and this festival and all the things that go on over the years and, and it's a big part of why we're successful is that kind of partnership. Um, I went to Harlandsdale yesterday. Obviously that is the venue of venues in our business. There is no one, there's nothing like Harlandsdale and we, we really covet and, and want to care for and be a part of the stewardship of that venue, that park, that, that sort of that civic jewel. And um, I met with friends of Franklin Park. They're, they're a huge part of um, why we're here. Once again, they, they're advocating um, for the, the, the preservation of all those beautiful buildings, of the connectivity of bridges. Um, and we sat down and talked about how we can be and even, I mean, we make an investment in Friends of Franklin Park and Heritage Foundation and lots of causes here. And we do that out of the, 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 the respect and the, the um, energy that everybody brings to their causes and organizations. And so we're, we want to be that citizen. But with Friends in particular, the projects that they're working on, the money from each ticket that we give for the use of the park and for those projects is something that we spent some time yesterday figuring out how to, how to be even more um, beneficial. So I could sit here and talk about this forever, but I just appreciate you guys. I appreciate the opportunity to sit up here. Appreciate BOMA year over year listening to what makes pilgrimage tick, what we need as producers, and how we can be more successful here by having you guys enjoy pilgrimage. Appreciate y'all. Oh, yes. And least but not, last but not least, under two of your chairs that you're sitting on is an envelope and in that envelope, and two chairs, might not be a chair that's even been sat in right now, um, and certificates for two passes. Two passes. There's one. Two tickets to pilgrimage and another one. All right. <laughs> Almost forgot. <laughs> um, well, well, at least we'll see these folks at pilgrimage, but we are going to sell this, this festival out this year. That's only happened once before. Uh, and that means a lot in this business, and I hope that's a source of pride, too. If you don't have a ticket, you can still get them. Thank you so much. And so, yeah. And, and those can be the tickets. Uh, folks who got the envelopes at the pilgrimage table back there, uh, see them after, okay? Uh, without further ado, uh, the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Tom Lawrence, the voice you know and love is going to come up, and uh, Mayor Anderson and Mayor Moore, Mayor, Mayor Anderson and Mayor Moore are coming up, and Tom is going to conduct our mayoral summit. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate you filling in for Mindy in uh, short order.
Mindy is at home right now listening on the radio, breathing very hard. She has strep throat, so uh, we don't need to make it any worse, Mindy, so we'll get right to the uh, program. Where did the mayor of Williamson County go? Oh, he's behind me? It, it figures. It fi it's a microphone, Mayor. You can touch it. As Huckleberry Finn once said, you can't swing a dead cat by the tail and not hit a mayor in here this morning. <laughs> mayor, you're lucky I don't have a dead cat. Uh, you got the floor, sir. How do you follow that, huh? Uh, well, thanks, Tom, for being here. We wish uh, good health, speed health to, to Mindy and all that she has done for this organization. Mr. Baggins, you're doing a good job this morning, doing a good job. So each one of us is going to take a few, few moments and kind of talk about what's going on in the cities and the counties. But before I do that, I know there are several elected people here. I saw the judge, county commissioner, school board members, just all of you, if you're elected alderman, would you stand at this time so we can give you proper recognition? And if you are interested, Brad Coleman, who sent out the tax assessments, he's the one in the third row from the back, third row, but in. No, he does a great job. Uh, he's doing a wonderful thing for us. One item I did want to talk about this morning is it's a countywide effort. All of these uh, mayors throughout the county, their city managers, city administrators, we are getting together and looking with the professional side of the county and looking at how the growth patterns should be over the next five and 10 years. So let me go back a little bit and put this in perspective for you. A little over 20 years ago, the legislators put together a committee and said, or put together people and said, we need to have growth all across our, our state and which areas are you growing in, cities and counties? And let's define that. And out of that came what we call is the uh, growth plan for all of the state of Tennessee, but more specifically for Williamson County. Nolansville, Brentwood, Franklin, Thompson Station, Fairview, and Spring Hill all said back in the late 90s, 99, 98, that this is how we're going to grow for the next 20 years. And those paired up with the county lines. And in between that, we call the urban growth boundaries. Those are the areas that would grow from the city over the next 20 years into areas that they seemed, or as they deemed, necessary for their, their services. To my knowledge, the mayors, city managers, and these professional people under the oversight of what we're attempting to do is the first we've, that's been done in the state of Tennessee is to get all of these entities back together and see how growth needs to be for the next five and ten years, looking particularly at those urban growth boundaries. That's a real hard project because all cities and counties have different perspectives on how they want to grow, and, and, and it's, it's a challenge, but it can be done. And so we have dedicated about a, a year and a half to two years out to try to get that process finished so that all the cities will have an opportunity to, 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 to define how they want to grow, and you will have a lot of input, uh, ability for that input, either on the, on the websites that are available or in public meetings. So each one of those cities will be reaching out to you. We'll be reaching out to you from the county. Personally, I think the biggest challenge that we have over the next five and 10 and 20 years as we double our population by the year 2045 is to continue to, to, to define how Williamson County grows and control that growth in the way that is best for each of your cities and for our county over wide, uh, overall. When you think about our schools, Franklin Special School District as well as the 
Williamson County Public School System. We do not need to be building schools where there's not proper infrastructure put in and having the people, and they're going to come, and they are coming. But these leaders with the school side need to know where to build these schools, and it's not always an easy challenge, whether it's Franklin Special or it's in the Williamson County Public School System. So with that, I'll uh, turn it back over to Tom, unless you've got something else you want to throw at me. No, sir. And, uh, no, uh, uh, the Williamson County Fair begins Friday week. It does. I'm glad you brought that up because I have to go back to the office and face Diane. Mm -hmm. um, you can face her right there. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, a week from Friday, August the 6th, is the start of the Williamson County Fair. Uh, there's an opportunity for you to buy your tickets online to save a little money, so do that. We're expecting, just like in this audience, every event that Ken and all of these mayors go to this over the last 30 days, 45 days, whether fish fries or ice cream suppers, they are packed, and people are willing, uh, wanting to get out and um, socialize the best they can. So thank you for letting me redeem myself a little, Tom. All right. The Mayor Franklin is uh, Dr. Ken Moore, uh, an orthopedist. Did you know that there is one Franklin employee who has not only one doctorate, but she has two? That would be our police chief. The, the police chief of the city of Franklin is Dr. Deborah Faulkner. That's right. Uh, and she's here this morning. Oh, Good morning, yes. Deb. Oh, yes. Mm. The floor is yours, sir. Well, I, I certainly appreciate your recognizing uh, Chief Faulkner, and she does such a great job for us, and she leads a department that's one of the top departments in America that's uh, CALEA certified, and that's a fancy acronym, which I don't remember, but uh, speaks to the uh, fact of, of how many certifications and level of expertise our department has, so she deserves a lot of praise in addition to all of her department who are serving the city so well. So thank you, Deb, and thanks for being here this morning. And uh, I think I've got some slides. I don't know if they're available or not. Uh, there you go. Good. So, uh, Rogers, I, I appreciate your comments, and I appreciate your leadership on this county growth plan, and all the mayors in the city look forward, in the county look forward to being part of that, along with a lot of other people in our community. Uh, <clears throat> as Rogers mentioned, it is going to be a challenge for us as we continue to grow uh, with uh, our populations projected to double in Franklin and Williamson County, and also the jobs are going to continue to grow are the best predictions we have. Uh, the next slide, uh, please. Uh, this is Maureen Haley Thornton. And uh, we want to welcome her this morning. Maureen, are you here? There you are. You know, tourism is an important part of uh, Franklin. Uh, if you go downtown, you see a lot of the uh, leisure tourists have now returned. And uh, it's a significant factor for all of our citizens in Franklin because tourism uh, creates uh, enough uh, money that it reduces our tax burden by about 500 and something dollars and so Maureen comes from Houston and we're excited she's here and I urge every one of you to reach out to her and say hello and uh, offer offer your help in the best way you can in the next slide uh, we're in an election cycle for the city of Franklin uh, we're gonna have four new aldermen uh, after the election, which is uh, October the uh, 26th. Uh, we're gonna, we have one alderman that's not opposed, Alderman Berger, and congratulations on that. But we, we have 14 total candidates, which I know many of them are here this morning, and I'm, I'm going to ask them to raise their hand or stand. Uh, I mean, this is a brave new world to stick your neck out there. And, So I urge, I urge each and every one of you to, to meet these candidates and learn what they stand for, uh, know who they are, because you're going to have uh, 
four new aldermen and uh, one uh, alderman will continue to serve. Uh, how have we, or what's happening now that the pandemic has uh, declined? Uh, you know, we've now starting to go back and greet each other like today, which is very, very special. But we've already had a number of festivals and we're witnessing the eagerness of citizens and tourists to come back and, and, and be engaged again. And it's still a little bit, uh, I guess, uh, challenging to us as we try to figure this out. You know, we've already had Juneteenth, which was a wild success. We had the Main Street Festival, which was fabulous to see so many people. And then this past weekend, Bluegrass on the Harpeth. And so we continue to see more and more of those festivals return. And of course, Brantwood with uh, pilgrimage. Uh, but also the city, the next slide, has continued to, we haven't stopped because of the pandemic. We've continued to have a lot of projects that are continuing, such as Franklin Road, if you didn't notice, is torn up. And, uh, <laughs> uh, but also you see Mac Hatcher is uh, going to be completed this fall. We're excited about that. That'll be a special time. Uh, we you probably don't see uh, the water reclamation facility, which will be another year before its completion, but this is the largest single capital project that the city has ever done. But other projects such as uh, McEwen, we're starting to get at phase four, we're in the uh, right of way acquisition phase and we're finishing up the uh, uh, final uh, construction plans for Columbia Avenue. Uh, and we're also looking to build a bridge across the Harpeth River on the back of Harlandsdale in addition to a new park in southeast Franklin, if you drive by there, we're building a bridge across the Harpeth River now to access that property. So uh, next slide. One of the important things that we're looking at in, in, on the horizon is a new city hall. Uh, the current city hall has outlived its usefulness, and you'll see a link there where you can go in and uh, express your opinion about a new city hall and what you think it should look like. In addition, you can also go on our website and there's a projects dashboard where you can see where projects are, uh, what the timeline is, how much money we're spending on those, and so on. And then also you can uh, link up to the park. So that's all I have this morning. I don't know the significance. I was told to, to go to one side and Rogers the other side. Rogers migrated to the right side. And I couldn't get over there because I was told to be on the other side. So I don't think it has any significance. Do you, Rogers? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, you're going to have to use your mic, Mayor. If you want him to hear you, you're going to have to use that microphone. All right. Uh, there's no significance of him being on the left and him being on the right. Is there, Mayor Anderson? I think you need to call up the other mayors, Tom. <laughs> Well, let's, <laughs> let's, uh, and, uh, excuse me, you had a tax increase this year and he didn't, hold on here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's rough, it's just rough. It's up rough all days. over. Yeah, let's meet the other mayors of uh, the municipalities of, uh, of Williamson County. Uh, ladies first. Debbie Rainey, the mayor of Fairview. <clears throat> Let's see here. Derek Adams, the mayor of Nolansville. You can tell he hasn't been mayor of Nolansville very long. He doesn't have one gray hair. And speaking of uh, gray hair, Ray Little, the mayor of Brentwood. <laughs> and the mayor of my hometown, uh, is it Hageman or Hageman, sir? Jim Hageman, the mayor of Spring Hill. And I can remember when this man didn't have any gray hair, Corey Napier, mayor of Thompson Station. We 
word is you just have a back. seat and lady and gentlemen there will be uh, there's a microphone somewhere close to you so if you could pass that around as you would uh, we have uh, questions and we'll get to as many as we can I'll make you one promise we're going to leave here at eight, I'm going to leave here at 845 these folks may stay but I'm going to leave here at 845 because the mayor of Fairview said she had to be at work at nine and so do I uh, let's start to the far left if you would uh, geographically speaking with an increase in sales tax that will revert to the county and the increase in impact funds that have been freed and more building in the county why did we need to increase the county tax let's reverse that and go to the mayor <laughs> of Williamson County Rogers Anders thank you Tom <laughs> I just read what they put in front of me sir Everybody has a crutch, and uh, so let, let me kind of over, give you a, a snapshot of that. We did um, have a reassessment, as all of you know. We were kidding about Brad uh, Coleman, an outstanding job that he did. When you do a reassessment every five years, and this is the last time we'll do five years, we're going to a four-year reassessment. But when you do that reassessment, you capture all of those values that you've captured since the last time you did it with some marginal adjustments that Brad's team does on a year-by-year -year basis. So the values this year, um, many of you have heard me say this, that the total value this year was 60, over $65 billion worth of values. That's residents, that's commercial, uh, that's your property, everything that we've got in the Williamson County, excluding churches and, and, and government buildings, you pull up those values and it came to $65 billion. And that in itself doesn't mean a lot until I give you some perspective of just going back 10 years ago. What were our values 10 years ago? And those values 10 years ago when we did a reappraisal period was 30 billion dollars so we more than doubled in total values total buildings valued property and that's an amazing number that we're seeing and you would think well that value would offset any kind of property uh, with its uh, tax and we're restricted by law to making that revenue neutral so our county commissioners through the aid of Brad and through the certification of the state of Tennessee, look at that and they bring that tax rate back down to what it would generate prior to that. So our tax rate was $2.22. We brought it down to $1.75.76. They go out about four, four decimals. And then we bumped it up 12 and a half, 13 pennies, we call it. Three pennies that are going to our school departments, school operations, school building, and things like that. The rest of it is going for items that we see that are down the road. It was the first property tax that we've had in over five years, which is about one and a half percent of the growth rate. So nobody likes a property tax increase. Nobody fully appreciates what all of these men and the different boards that we've got to do, but to keep up with the things that we've got to have over the next three and four years, these are some of the programs that we've got in the pipeline that need to be paid for. And of course, all of you have heard the story, Tom, that, uh, the, that the vast majority of any amount of money that you have, even schools get 75% of everything, including debt, but it goes toward the operation side, the, the salary, and all these businessmen and women, and including us, we're having a very difficult time hiring people, retaining people, and so some of that money will be used for that too. But it's, uh, I hate to say it's modest. Nobody likes, a, as I said, a property tax increase, but it was very much needed, and I, and I hope you will, will, will understand what we're tr attempting to do to keep Williams County that AAA rated and the community that people want to live and work in. Uh, this is a question for each one of the uh, 
mayors this morning. And uh, to be honest, uh, Mayor Anderson and Mayor Moore have both made, uh, have already answered this in their actions. Uh, Debbie Rainey, would you publicly support a campaign that encourages all citizens eligible for the vaccine to get the vaccine? Thank you, Tom. I think that one of the blessings of living here is that we all, I heard the school board chair this morning, I were talking about this is a close community and I think that we all do what we think we need to do to protect those around us. So as far as supporting a campaign either for or against, I think our best choice is always to let people do what they know to do to help and protect others. Notice the Mayor Nolansville socks, if you would. <laughs> Can you tell he's a software engineer? Uh, the Mayor of Nolansville is Derek Adams. Mayor, you heard the question. Are you encouraging Nolan's villains to get the vaccine? Yeah, thank you for that question. What a, what a first question as first time mayor up here. Um, you know, I'm a big uh, a proponent of personal responsibility and personal choice. Um, I do think uh, if anybody wants to get it, you should. And uh, it, it's, a good, it's a good thing that it's available, but n no government should require it. And, um, you know, I'm double vaccinated. That was my personal choice. And uh, if that's not your personal choice, I would always say personal responsibility. Make sure you don't endanger others. Make sure you're being safe and, and responsible and respectful of others' choices as well. Ray Little, City of Brentwood. Is this on? Yes, sir. Well, many generations, Williamson County and um, Brentwood and Franklin family. Liberty is a word you see a lot around Williamson County, both on roads and schools and streets. And I do believe in personal liberty. And so I would never impose upon someone to get a vaccination. Personally, I did when I was eligible. Uh, there's some people who can or can't for personal health reasons. I feel that we've done a great job in the county and I'll give kudos to the county to making the vaccine available for those who wanted to take it. And I actually do think it's wonderful for us to advertise and let people know where they can get the vaccine if they choose to do it. But there again, it is their liberty to choose to have a vaccine or not to. So I'm for advertising where it's available, but never mandating to anybody they need a vaccine. Corey Napier, Mayor of Thompson Station. I would, re I would reflect the earlier comments. I, I'm a big believer in people need to make the best decision for them, themselves and their family, but I think they need to be educated. And I think we in elected leadership roles have a, it's incumbent upon us to do our best to make sure our constituency, our residents, our citizens are educated. And I encourage everybody to speak with their medical providers and we as leaders do what we can to give folks the resources to that end. Hageman Hageman. Yes, sir. Thank you. Well, how, pronounce your name for me. I hate getting names wrong. Phonetically, it's Hageman. All right, sir. Yes, sir. Mayor of Spring Hill. So I believe in very small government, and I believe absolutely the government should not tell you what to do, how to conduct your own lives. So I do not believe in a, ma a, a vaccine mandate, but I do believe that Education is part of uh, the citizens of Spring Hill, the citizens of anywhere you live, to um, make an informed decision. And it should be your decision to go. That's, that's the bottom line. Thank you. Uh, and as a proud Spring Hillian, Spring Hill is either the second or third largest city in Williamson County. It's the largest city in Murray County. Mayor Moore, you have spoken about this many times. You got anything to say or you all spoke out? 
Well, I, I, I concur with what everyone said, but I think that if we look back during the pandemic, the biggest enemy we had was uh, confusing messages, messages that were not consistent uh, throughout the uh, pandemic. Uh, I think the best thing we can do is make sure that we have the appropriate information, the best scientific information, and then let people have their own decision as whether they want to have the vaccine. If we look at what our options are, uh, there aren't a lot of options to end the pandemic uh, other than, you know, immunization, uh, social distancing, mask wearing, which I understand is controversial. Uh, many of the medications that are out there are still under study and uh, so we, we hope to see some better information about those. Uh, Mayor Anderson, you got anything to say? Uh, I'll give you an option here. Uh, I, I'm a firm believer in actions speak louder than words, and I've seen these two fellows act. Well, I think, I think when you, um, first of all, my answer would be the same as the others that have said here, but um, I, I need to reflect on something, Tom, and, and say thank you to all the people here and the people that are watching. Williamson County is the number one county in the state for vaccinations through education. Congratulations and thank you for helping us. Are you saying Williamson Countyans are smarter than the rest of those Tennesseans? <laughs> Seeing how none of them can vote for me in the other counties, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think that's the closest he's going to come to announcing for re-election today. <laughs> uh, we started with uh, the mayor of Fairview, so we'll start the next question with you. We'll get, uh, we'll get her off the hook, but she'll know what, what's coming. Diversity can be viewed in many ways. How do you view diversity in Nolansville? And is there an attempt to diversify? Absolutely, uh, what a great question. Yeah, one of the, the big things I've been talking about in Nolansville is uh, a, not affordable housing, but attainable housing and housing options. And that's a big focus right now uh, to move away from just uh, large lot single family homes and, and provide some other uh, you know housing options uh, in Nolansville. Uh, additionally, we uh, celebrated for the first time Juneteenth, uh, and I thought that was a big uh, important uh, thing that that deserved recognition. And uh, we'll, we're going to continue to do that annually in Nolansville as well and participate with the uh, uh, event that was over here in Franklin. Uh, so, yes, diversity is. Uh, is a very important thing to Nolensville, and I think our our actions on and on housing is going to be uh, the first step in that direction. Mayor Little, repeat the question. Yeah, Tom. Diversity can be viewed in many ways. How do you view diversity, and is is there an attempt to diversify in Brentwood? I think Brentwood is a community that was uh, established years ago as a very accepting and and diverse community, but I don't think that we necessarily promote or do programs for diversity. We allow the populace to, to determine if they want to live there, how they want to participate, what activities they want to take part in. So uh, uh, we do not have a definitive push for that, but I'm all for uh, so We have many, many nationalities and, and, and all that, that live in Brentwood. and and a great cooperative community. So I think we do a good job of it in Brentwood. Mayor Napier. Uh, right, uh, so the last time I was with you, whenever that was, a year or two ago, here, I talked about building modern Mayberry. And I think one of those implicit values that we talk about with Mayberry of yore is uh, knowing your neighbor. And so like the mayor of Nolensville was talking about you know, we're, we're a community that's largely residential at this point. Things are changing, more commercials coming in. But we have always tried to create a palette of housing, uh, different price points, so that kids can live next to their parents, who can live next to their grandparents, and there's housing options for them. 
and we are setting the stage with our parks and trailways to encourage people to get out and know their neighbors, be social, uh, get to know folks that live next door to you and not hide behind your walls. And, uh, and, and I think we've seen this with the pandemic. And so yes, diversity takes all forms. And for our community, uh, we're about 90% white. I mean, that's the bottom line. That's what the census will tell you when it comes out. Uh, we are encouraging newcomers from all over. And there are folks from California and Illinois moving in every day, and they're mashing up with us Southerners. So, you know, stay tuned. Mayor Hageman. Thank you. So I'm a, I'm a, I, a former Air Force guy. I'm retired Air Force, and I was, uh, I've been in the diversity realms for my whole life since I, for a long time. And um, I'm a supporter of diversity because I have found that First of all, let me say this, when the word infrastructure goes out, a lot of people, I believe, go to the, they go to the mindset, infrastructure, roads. There's a lot more to infrastructure than just roads. I think when the word diversity goes out, I think a lot of people's mind goes to race, color of your skin. Um, there's a lot more to diversity than just race. And so to diversity to me as a supporter of that, I have found in my life that um, there are that everyone, regardless of your socioeconomic status, regardless of the color of your skin, regardless if you're a Republican or a Democrat, regardless if you're the mayor of that place, or Spring Hill, Thompson Station, um, uh, regardless of whatever it is that you do, regardless if you're uh, uh, a male or a female, everyone has value. And I think that if people take the time to delve into someone else's uh, story or their culture, you will find, and I have found, that because everyone has value, that it is a great thing. So diversity comes with all of that. So don't judge a book by its cover. Don't judge a book by somebody's bank account. Delve into their whatever it is that they have to offer, and they do have something to offer. So I absolutely support diversity. Thank you. Mm. Mayor Moore, does diversity in Franklin go further than a, a fuller story? Well, I, I kind of equate diversity and inclusivity uh, kind of in the same phrase and uh, we've had an uh, initiative called Unite Williamson now I guess this is maybe our fourth year uh, which is an effort to help people understand who their neighbors are uh, whether their skin color is different whether their religion is different whether they speak a different language whether they have a different sexual orientation or different nationality so uh, we look forward to continue to uh, encourage people to attend Unite Williamson and be part of that uh, to make sure that everyone in our community is included. Mayor Rogers Anderson, Mayor Moore calls you the big mayor. Uh, is diversity a bigger problem or a bigger opportunity in Williamson County? I've always thought that Dr. Ken Moore, the mayor of Franklin, when he said big mayor and little mayor was talking in terms of structure like you and me. <laughs> but to answer your question, <laughs> to answer your question, I, I, uh, I appreciate all the answers, but I kind of go back on the way that my mom and dad raised me and the values that I have and um, you know, God created us all equal of you. Um, go back and do your homework, and I'm not going to change or deviate from that, and so we need to treat everyone with respect. Uh, we need to treat everyone that moves into our community and uh, with the utmost uh, attention that, that they're important, that, that all of us are very, very important in that, Tom. <laughs> Fairview Mayor Debbie Rainey. Well, 46 years ago, I moved into Williamson County from a very diverse small town. And I agree with our Spring Hill Mayor that diversity takes a whole different range of diversity. My day job, I am the regional coordinator for Mills on Wheels. So we have an elderly population in Fairview. We have young families, we have young single people. And my biggest accomplishment, I think, is pushing the city, well, the community, to make sure when they rebuild their, play, their, rebuild their playground that it's inclusive. And that is scheduled to open July 1 next year. So 
when we talk about diversity, it's sometimes easy to get lost and it's just race, but it's not. It's everyone and everything. Thank you, Mayor. Um, look at the old mayors up here. They, they've all got wristwatches on. The young mayors up here don't. Uh, can you tell me when it's getting close to 845? <laughs> okay. What time is it? It's 0830. It's 0830. We got 15 minutes to go. You ready for a hot potato? I, I guess. What are your thoughts on remasking? Um, my prayer is the virus does not come back with such a vengeance that we have to. I feel at this point that um, in Brentwood, most of the citizens have been wise. Many of our citizens are vaccinated. Uh, I definitely feel like if they're vaccinated, they should have the choice of whether they mask or not. Um, we've not in this county, going back to Liberty, uh, done hard mandates. Uh, we followed the state advice, the state health department's device, advice. Uh, but I'm, I, cases would have to get real, real bad before I would be for everyone wearing masks as we had to six, nine months ago, because I, I just feel that it, uh, uh, the vaccine is a much more effective weapon, and it's something that is very available in this county. So, um, no, I, 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 I don't foresee that either. And by God's grace, we won't have to have to deal with that. Corey Napier, Thompson Station. Well, when this pandemic thing happened early on, we were trying a lot of different things as a country and globally. Uh, we didn't know really the efficacy of the mask or not the mask. And, and so I, my, my bias will be not to mask up unless we begin to see a surge again and take directive from those that are in the science and the medical community. Uh, but I'd rather not see new, uh, another mandate put in place. Uh, these questions come, by the way, from a uh, Franklin Tomorrow Committee. And uh, that, is, uh, that is how they are constructed. Mayor Hageman. So my thoughts on remasking is if, again, as I said, when we're talking with regards to the vaccines, I believe in small government and the government not getting into your business. I think it's a great idea, a great idea for a person who is immune compromised or just is, wants to be as safe as possible to put a mask on. I fully support that. For the government to tell you to mandate a mask, um, I do not support that personally. However, if the government did tell me to do it, everybody has to answer something. So I, as being raised um, to follow my parents' rules, to being raised in the military, to say yes sir or yes ma'am, I would, uh, if they told me I had to do it, then I would. But if they gave me the choice as mayor to say, do you have the choice to tell your citizens to do it or not? I would tell them it's whatever you want to do. Thank you. Mayor Moore. I was looking at my watch. I think it's 845. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I am the only physician up here. Uh, I do not anticipate that we'll go to a mass mandate, but I think we all need to remember that there are people that have chosen not to be immunized and choose to wear a mask, and we need to be respectful of that. And if they choose to wear a mask, it's probably a good idea for us to try to accommodate them. And that's somewhat the policy we have in our office. If, if somebody comes in to, to see me or see any of our employees, uh, we try to mask up to, to be respectful of, of them at that point in time. Mayor Anderson, you're the only person up here. The governor of Tennessee has, at one time, gave the authority of uh, face masks. Uh, now, six months later, what do you think? Well, I, I think you're accurate in your statement in that, except for um, one person sitting up here, we had many, many meetings on a weekly basis with all the city mayors. We, including in that meeting, Tom, were healthcare professionals, school superintendents, both of them, and many other professional people through the public health arena that were on these calls making these decisions that we had to do. They were tough decisions, but at the end of the day, 
the law, as Jim has said, was relayed down to us. Currently, even if we wanted to, we can't. That is not the way the law is structured. When the governor gave the powers to come down to the local level, he said, you all make those decisions for your community at that time. I do not like the mask. I think it causes all kinds of anxieties, but I will wear the mask. I'm also of the opinion that if you go in for surgery, those physicians and nurses are wearing masks and shields, so there is, there's a very valid point of that, and Ken is correct. I leaned on him very heavily during this because he was the only physician and one of the few physicians across this state. And maybe, it, maybe if we'll do a better job of getting vaccinated, those are personal choices. We will not see that order come down from from the state and we can live our lives the way that we need to live them. Debbie Rainey. I think that when it comes right down to it, that being in a leadership position is hard on a good day. And we have to rely on our leaders to use science and, and knowledge and medical knowledge to make those decisions. And when those decisions come down, we have to abide by them and Derek Adams. Yeah, I definitely uh, supported uh, Mayor Anderson's decision, and I think it was important at the time to, for us to stay together as a county uh, with a consistent policy. Uh, personally, now that we're, we're past the mask mandate, I would not want to uh, reinstate that at Nolansville's level. Uh, what I would focus on is continued education and making sure we're putting out the information that we're receiving about the effectiveness of masks or any kind of resurgence and just uh, be adamant about businesses making those decisions for themselves and, and protecting our citizens when they feel that that's what's necessary for their, for their business. I'm looking over the questions here and these questions uh, uh, I received from Mindy uh, last night and I noticed one here that, and I'm not going to do this to Corey Napier. Uh, he would be the first one to answer this question. What is your spirit vegetable? <laughs> I'm not sure I know what a spirit vegetable is. So until I find out what a spirit vegetable is, let's move to uh, a, a different question, one that would apply more to uh, Thompson Station and Spring Hill and Franklin and Brentwood. Will we ever build homes for first-time home buyers? Two hundred to three hundred thousand dollar homes. Are they ever going to build any more of those in Thompson Station? Well, it's been interesting. You know, we, we as a community came together a number of years ago to, to put together a plan that would help, hopefully direct growth, not shut it down, but to somewhat moderate the growth, control it and provide, as I said earlier, a range of housing options. And so if you look at many of our subdivisions coming online, they have lower price points all the way up to the million dollar plus profile. Unfortunately, in this world of construction cost and relative home prices around us, there is this uh, unintended consequences, I guess, of seeing uh, the prices go up. I would like to continue to see a range of housing because we need young people and kids scampering around with all the old folks and people in between. And so I don't want to see that disappear. And so you'll see us in our urban planning and our growth planning continue to uh, encourage the starter home profile, but do so in a way that helps growth pay for itself and creates the amenity packages that our residents want. Jim Hageman. So earlier I said that everyone has value regardless of one of the items I iterated was uh, regardless of your socioeconomic status. So if you're in the tax bracket down here or somewhere up here, you should be able to get a house. The American dream, they attach that to. And so I fully believe and support any initiative that could go forward to have first time buyers to be in that price point bracket that they could get into a house. Unfortunately, the caveat to that is that supply and demand dictate what the market will break. And in Spring Hill at the moment, supply and demand, the supply is low, the demand is high. So 
unfortunately for people who want to get in that price uh, price point, it's not it's not feasible at the moment too much in Spring Hill. You can get a hidden gem every now and then, but when the market dies down and supply goes up and demand goes low, hopefully we can bring that back on. And I so it's it's awesome that it's when I bought my first house, my wife and I bought our first house. It was just the greatest feeling. Just that in itself is worth between two and three hundred thousand dollars. So, yeah, I fully support it. Thank you, Mayor Moore. Wow, this is really a, a challenging problem, and uh, we've been addressing it as best we can for some time. We have the Housing Commission, which uh, has been working on the issue. Uh, the fact that land is so expensive in Williamson County, particularly Franklin, uh, creates an extra challenge. Uh, we have some partnerships that we've been doing. Uh, one is with the Franklin Housing Authority as they redevelop their land, and we've been able to give them some uh, breaks as far as uh, some of their fees. Uh, the board has made that decision. Uh, the city is uh, currently uh, moving forward on the so-called Hill property there on Hillsborough Road next to the Sonic, uh, and we anticipate that that will be affordable and workforce housing, and our contribution to that will help that become a reality. Community Housing Partners uh, has done some great work. Uh, they're on uh, West Main, and now they're going to be building over off of uh, uh, Carruthers, a uh, great project there. Habitat is challenged in our community just because of land prices. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm an advocate for it. I wish our uh, uh, builder community would try to be more, uh, put more affordable and workforce housing in their developments. But at the current time with economics, uh, they tend to uh, build the more expensive homes, I assume, because maybe there's a better profit margin. Mayor Anderson? Yeah, uh, of course, I don't have anything to do with inside the cities. Um, so I'll just, my comments will be strictly to the unincorporated side of the county and land prices, lack of uh, public utilities. Uh, it's going to be very difficult um, to, to, to get any kind of uh, affordable type homes out there. but. Uh, I think sometimes government is also a hindrance in our fees and the structures that we have. And so we build these models when it comes to educational impact fees, the things that we do do. There are some concessions made in the law, not, not a committee, not me saying um, those fees can be waived. But inside the law itself, there are, there are ways that uh, we can lessen the burden when a current developer uh, decides to, to want to do that in the community. But it's very difficult here in this county, Tom. Uh, you, you brought up that impact fee. Um, you've almost got enough in that jar to build a school now, don't you? Um, we probably have in the educational impact fee if, um, I think you're right, but we would not take all that money and build one school. One school cost about $70 million. Is that right, Jason? $70 million, and that's without the land. So I'd hate to spend it all on that. It's better to straight it out over the, the debt service and, and pay for many schools. And believe me, the way the people are coming here, we're still building schools. Mayor Rainey? I'm, I'm sorry, Mayor. But that helps, and we greatly appreciate that. Mayor Rainey? Well, in Fairview, we've been lucky enough just recently that we have a developer who is trying to develop 42 acres into workforce housing, small, smaller homes, cottages, also apartments on that property. The problem we face is the community not wanting that density. And because property is so high in Williamson County, you know, develop developers have to ask for that density in order to build that workforce housing. But we are trying. Mayor Adams. Uh, yeah, this is a great question. Um, so I was at Outback Steakhouse having lunch, and I met a young man uh, there that was working there. Uh, 
we got small talking and he found out I was the mayor of Nolansville. He said, oh, I'm, I'm from there. Um, I don't live there anymore, but I want to. And uh, shout out to Mayor Hageman. He moved into Spring Hill because he said he could find uh, somewhere in his price point uh, in, in the Spring Hill area, though he wanted to live in Nolansville. So there's no doubt there's a lack of, of uh, the lower price point attainable housing in Nolansville. Uh, similar to Mayor Rainey, we have some large developments being proposed right now. Uh, the West Haven and Berry Farms developers uh, specifically are interested in building that, uh, you know, a little bit of mixed use, but uh, a wide variety master uh, of housing and a master plan uh, development. And, you know, I'm in favor of that. Um, the detractors, again, will say we don't want the density, but um, and with, with the density comes crime, and you hear all these arguments, but uh, I, what I say to that is Nolansville and Williamson County, we attract good people. And you want to live in, in Williamson County and Nolansville because of the family-friendly atmosphere, the, the goodness and the charm of the people that live there, and despite the type of housing someone can afford, that's what they're attracted to. And we're going to attract those type of people that want to live in this charming, family-friendly area. Uh, and so, yes, it's a, it's a big focus of mine personally to try to bring the variety of housing to Nolansville. And Mayor Ray Little. Um, all of the communities represented up here have unique circumstances. Brentwood is a residential community by nature, 90% residential, 5% commercial, which provides about 60, 65% of our revenue, and 5% church, parks, green space. 20, 25 years ago, we had a plethora of houses at $250,000, $300,000. I think this last year, our median price of a home in Brentwood is over a million dollars. Um, I do not feel it's the responsibility of the government of Brentwood to determine what houses should cost. I believe that's up to the developers and people who buy the land with many lots selling in Brentwood. And by the way, on growth, we, we do keep our growth. Right now, we're usually 130 to 170 housing permits a year. That's not real rapid growth. But as we approach build out and the land value that's been enhanced by many things we've done for quality of life over the last 20, 25 years that's wonderful for our residents, um, I think the average lot's now going for 750 to thousand dollars. We also have one acre density and it is sacrosanct. Um, and so it makes it hard to even imagine that you could build something that would be two or three hundred thousand dollars. So I do not foresee that in the future of Brentwood and I think it would really bode a lot of ill to our community if, if our houses in Brentwood were only two hundred fifty thousand dollars. I believe that would take a major economic collapse. I'd, do not foresee that happening anytime in the near future. All right, gentlemen and lady, you're off the hook. I'm done. Uh, Patrick Baggett, you going to talk about the dip jar? And next time, Patrick, when we get you on the radio, I'll ask you about your spirit vegetable. Oh, all well, right. Well, <laughs> I wanted to, wanted to clear some things. Thank you, all mayors, for being here. Uh, and I think everyone. Not sure if uh, you knew exactly what was coming your way this morning with the, with the question selection, but those questions were submitted by you all. So, uh, that, and we delivered that list as Franklin tomorrow, just straight from the Eventbrite question uh, submittal. So, and, and uh, those, that's how those questions were selected. So thank you all for, for doing that. Um, Breakfast with the Mayors, the next one is October 19th. Uh, join us for that. Uh, and then Monday, August 9th, our Frank Talks, and Deb Varallo is here. And Deb is going to be, um, who is probably one of the best networkers I know, uh, she is going to do a, a lecture on honing our post-pandemic networking skills. And then as Tom brought up our dip jar, again, all these events are free uh, to you. And we thank our partners, but we also have this little dip jar over there, and so you can put... Uh, your credit card or debit card in there, and it will, with less than two, three seconds, you will have donated $20 to Franklin Tomorrow. Every dollar counts for our organization as we put on these free events. Thank you all, 
And this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.